Welcome back, squad. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode 50. That's right, 5 0 of Full Ride, the college recruiting podcast, uh, where each and every Thursday, our mission, our goal is to educate, equip, and empower our student athletes to take complete control of their college recruiting journey. And of course, we are powered as always by you recruit you. This is your recruiting coach, uh, former division one full ride student athlete, uh, and, uh, recruiting, um, you know, consultant, if you will, Quito Delgado. And, uh, I am just thrilled. I'm thrilled um, to be at episode 50. Um, but more importantly, I'm thrilled, uh, that you are here with me, uh, to celebrate this, uh, mini milestone. And I just hope over the last 50 episodes, we've been able to, to, uh, to encourage you at times to, to hold you accountable, to, to challenge you at times. Um, but most importantly, I just truly hope uh, that you gain value, uh, in our, uh, in our podcast. The majority of the time it is just me. Um, but I'd say about 40% of the time we do have former college athletes who have joined me. Uh, so I just want to quickly thank each and every one of them who have taken time to share their experiences with us, uh, and, uh, and share some really critical advice for our current recruits, but then also our current college athletes. Uh, making sure that they maximize uh, their their college experience, um, and um, and I'm just really uh, I'm just really thrilled, um, and I'm just gonna give myself a pat on the back because um, a big part, a big thing that I preach uh, is consistency. Right, you have to be consistent in, in, in anything that you do, uh, and I'm just glad that I've been um, you know really been motivated, um, you know, to stay the course, to release a new episode every single Thursday. Um, and again, I just hope that uh, you find value in it. But I have a special episode geared up for you. And I'm going to get right into it uh, because it may be on the long side. We'll see. I haven't um, really, you all can do as a family to help jumpstart college recruiting in 50 days or less. So 50 for 50, if you will. And um but before we get to that, as always, I just want to encourage you to, to uh, learn more about You Recruit You and the services that we do offer uh, to families. You can go on over to our website. It's yourecruityou.com. And uh, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at You Recruit You. Search us on Facebook at You Recruit You. And then finally, I'm actually recording this episode on YouTube. Uh, so you can uh, head on over to our, our YouTube uh, channel as well and just search us out at You Recruit You. Uh, this is your first time checking us out. Welcome to the squad. And uh, I hope it's not your last time listening to our, uh, our weekly episodes. And I really want to invite you to subscribe to the show um, by, um, you know, tapping the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. Um, but then also feel free to just kind of rewind back in time and go back to episode one and uh, work your way all, all the way on through. Um, but though that's the housekeeping for today. Like I said, I really want to get into this episode um, and talk about 50 things, 50 steps, we'll, we'll call it, 50 steps families can take to jumpstart college recruiting in 50 days or less. So 50 Four fifty, and just so you know, for some of you, if you're a freshman, um, it may not all apply to you. But if you're a senior, um, some of the stuff I hope you've already done. Uh, so let's get right into it. I just jotted down a bunch of different notes. I think I might end up having more than fifty, and again, it's going to be really quick um, because I do want to get to fifty of them for you. All right. Number one um, is have the talk. Right, mom and dad, you can't want this process uh, more than your son or daughter wants it. You can't want them to be a college athlete more than they do. So before you even think about, you know, getting into college recruiting and attending camps and, 
you know, hiring a personal trainer and all this different stuff. Um, I really want to encourage you all to, to sit together and really have a conversation and have your son or daughter tell you that it really is their desire to play in college. Get that buy-in from them. All right. Number one, I think that is so critical and so many families uh, miss out on that opportunity. Um, and again, there's no particular order on this. I try to keep it in order, but you know, when you're writing 50 of them, you know, you're kind of brainstorming. I'm just kind of jotting them all down. Um, number two, when it comes to college recruiting, it's kind of funny. You know, we always talk about, you know, you got to be a good athlete, right? Because definitely you got to have ability in order for a college coach to recruit you. But I really want to touch on number touch on number two quickly. Academics matter. Academics matter. I don't care how big, strong, fast you are. Um, how talented you are. At the end of the day, a coach can't offer you any type of scholarship if they can't get you into the school. So academics matter. So number two, I want you to lock in on your NCAA core courses at the start of your freshman year, right? Many of you are striving to be all-stars, you know, in sports, whether you play basketball, football, baseball, soccer, field hockey, uh, wrestling, you're a runner, you're a swimmer, whatever it is, you all want to be an all-star in your sport. You want to make all conference. You want to make all state. You love to be an all-American. Well, I want you to take that same intensity and focus and apply it in the classroom. Be, be an all-star in a classroom and strive for that 3.0 or higher GPA. But keep in mind, now going to number three, not all courses are treated the same. I just mentioned core classes. Many of you are focusing on you know all of your classes which you definitely should but the ncaa doesn't necessarily take into account all of your classes like gym music art um you know computer right every school um submits to the ncaa their course curriculum and then the ncaa determines which of those classes are considered ncaa approved core courses Right. So I really need you to get together with your guidance counselor and make sure you are on on track to make um, to complete your core courses. You got to take at least four to five every year. And just the high level is usually going to be your math, your science, um, your English, your history, uh, like a, 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 a Spanish, you know, or, or German or French, you know, a, a language a language course. Um, but those are kind of the, the things you got to do. But the key is, like I said, for number uh, for number three, make sure that you are taking the right core courses uh, and you can you can um, you can get that done by connecting with your guidance counselor. Number four, take the SAT or ACT by the end of your sophomore year. Yes. And um, for many of you, this is going to be I'm going to sound like a broken record because I, I do say this often on the podcast, but I'm a big believer in taking the, the SAT or the ACT by the end of your sophomore year. And then you head into your junior year. You take it one more time. Hopefully two times is the charm. But if necessary, take it a third time um, towards the middle and end of your junior year. Because I want you to, when you go into your senior year and coaches are, are asking you for your transcript, you can say, here you go, coach. I've already taken the SAT. I've already taken the ACT. I got a 3.0 GPA in my, with my transcript, and uh, I'm eligible. And that really helps you when it comes to becoming a recruited athlete because it shows that you're serious. You're taking the process seriously. You're committed not only, you know, in sports, but also in the classroom. And uh, coaches, you know, I'll, I'll touch on this later, but speed kills in college recruiting. And I'm not just talking about speed on the, on the field, but I'm also talking about the quicker you can show a coach that you're eligible, the quicker they'll be able to actually offer you a scholarship as a junior. So that's why I'm a big, big believer from a strategic standpoint um, of taking the SAT or the SAT as early as possible, early and often. Number five, and again, this is no particular order, um, particularly now if you're a freshman or a sophomore, this isn't necessary for you. But by the end of your junior year, I really want my families to register with the NCAA Eligibility Center and obtain, you know, your, your ID, 
right? You can't play Division One. You can't play Division Two without having that eligibility, um, that ID, right? So again, talking about speed kills, having all your ducks in a row, right? You, you register with the NCAA. You got your, you know, at the end of your junior year, you have, you know, 12, 13 core, ca core classes under your belt. You've taken the ACT, SAT, SAT two or three times. You're, you're lining up all your ducks in a row, all right? Now, number, where are we at? Number six, I want you to build a target list, and I put this in bold, of at least 50 schools. Build a target list of at least 50 schools. So many of you, you know, I work with a number of families uh, in my one-on-one -on -one coaching with them, and I give them this assignment, and very often they come back with 10, uh, with 20. A lot of families stop at like five or 10. And I tell them that is not enough because what if you can't get into those schools academically or what if those coaches don't want you and immediately your, your list shrinks. So I always encourage my student athletes to build a list of 50 schools, but you also want to make sure you have a, a number of schools from, from various um, levels. So maybe division one, division two, II, division three, NAIA, even junior colleges for some of you. Right. Depending on the situation, depending on your grades, you may have to start evaluating junior colleges. But the point is 50 schools, right, 50 schools. Um, and it's really easy to do if you lock in on that process. Um, so I need you guys to do that. Um, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but, you know, just in a general school of thought. And again, if you're a junior or senior, this doesn't apply to you. But maybe, um, you know, you are that freshman family listening to the podcast. I want to serve everybody. But start planning the process early, and that means your freshman year. And I kind of just outline above the things you can be doing as a freshman. The main thing is making sure you handle those, those classes, get off to a strong start. But just as a family, have that talk, start the, the process early your freshman year. In other words, don't wait till your junior year, don't wait till your senior year to get serious about college recruiting because a lot of instances by then, it's too late. Not so much that it may be too late for you to be for you to be getting recruited, but it's more about, oh man, I, I wasn't serious my freshman year with my grades or my sophomore year with my grades, and now you've fallen behind. So I really want you just to lock in your freshman year and understand that this college recruiting is not a one-year process. It's a three, four year process, right? So start it early, um, as early as possible. Now, that does not mean, I don't want to get two sidetracks, I want to keep going, but does, that does not mean, all right, that does not mean um, that you start reaching out to coaches your freshman year or you start attending, you know, combines and showcases. No, I don't want you to do that because there is a thing about, you know, exposing yourself to coaches too soon. I'd rather you be ready and wait till your junior year to do that. But from a pure planning process, putting your ducks in a row, Start it sooner rather than later, ideally your freshman year. Number nine. And again, this is no order, and I apologize, but we'll, we'll wrap it all up and you, you'll figure it out. Hopefully you're taking notes. Um, but I'm also, like I said, uh, recording this on YouTube so you can watch it. Um, and again, you can always rewind the podcast too and listen to it multiple times. But I want you to follow up with coaches on a consistent basis, right? Um, you know, I'm going to mention it later on, but a big part of this is you need to be proactive and you got to reach out to college coaches. But once you make that initial contact, many of you, you make that initial contact, but then there's no follow up, right? You're not, you're not consistently checking in with them. Um, and I need you guys to be consistent. Um, this really pertains to my, my juniors, my sophomores, and, and even my seniors, but particularly my sophomores and jun or juniors particularly, if a coach is starting to email, call you and stuff, I need you to um, you know, be in constant contact with them. And I'll explain more in a little bit. Um, number 10, this is more of a don't than a do, but please don't attend, um, you know, don't attend, um, I should say this, I'm sorry, don't pay uh five hundred dollars for a free t-shirt i'm gonna say that one more time in case you missed it don't pay five hundred dollars for a free t-shirt and what does this mean i'm um, particularly now as my recruits 
You're starting to evaluate which camps you want to attend. You're starting to look at which showcases you want to go to, IDs, you know, junior days. I really need you guys to really pay attention and evaluate uh, to make sure these camps are the right camps that you should be attending. You definitely should go, but I don't want you spending hundreds of dollars going to the wrong ones, and then you walk away with a free T-shirt but with no offers. Uh, you not only did you spend the money to attend, but you you spent money traveling to get to the game to the to the camp. If it's away, you're staying in a hotel, food. Before you know it, you spent eight hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars, and you really don't have anything to show for it. Number eleven, though, here's the key thing, right? It ties right in. Before attending any of these camps, before you go to any of these camps. I need you to reach out to the coach ahead of time. Reach out to the coach prior to you going to any of their camp showcases, letting them know that you are going to be in attendance. Because here's the thing, man, in many instances, these camps, these showcases, whatnot, they have anywhere from 200 all the way up to like 700, 800 student athletes. And they have their little list. They have their list of a handful, maybe a little bit more, of student athletes that they are going to see to evaluate more. And they got their eyes trained on them. And if you don't make an effort to connect with them prior to, to let them know you're going to be there, there's a good chance that you're going to go, you're going to play, and they're not even going to see you because they're, they got their eyes trained on somebody else. So I always tell families when I'm working with them, what camps are you going to? Cool. Have you reached out to the coach yet? Reach out to the coach prior to attending any camps, right? Um, number 12, have an open mind to all levels of competition, right? Too many families get caught up in this division one or bust mindset. So again, if you're a senior right now, or if you're at the end of your junior year and you have no D1 offers, it may be time for you to pivot and start considering some division two some NAIA, some Division Three opportunities. Don't fall for that myth that Division Three doesn't offer um, scholarships. They may not offer athletic scholarships, but if you have strong academics, they can certainly put together a package for you that will, um, you know, you know, in many instances, surpass an athletic scholarship. So don't be afraid uh, to connect with those Ivy League schools, those Division Three schools. All right. Um, Next one, we got, I think it's number 12. Play for an elite team with a proven track record of helping their athletes earn an athletic scholarship to college. All right. This is really important for, for my families to realize that not all travel teams are created equally. There are a lot of them out there, and they will a lot of the times will happily take your money. Uh, but the reality is um, some of them have no business, you know, really going to these tournaments. They don't have the infrastructure. The coaches don't have the relationships that may be playing in the wrong tournament. Whatever the case may be, the ultimate goal, if you are if you're spending your time and your money, your weekends going to these tournaments with a travel team, with an elite team, particularly as it relates to, you know, soccer, you got the AAU circuit. You got baseball, you have softball, you have certain sports that really don't recruit um, athletes via their high school team. So making sure you latch on to a good travel team uh, is, is imperative to get in that exposure. But again, not all teams, um, you know, are, are in your best interest. On the side note, though, as you evaluate, you know, a lot of times, some of these school, some of these teams are elite. Some of them do have an amazing track record. The problem is, though, if the team is so good and you sit the bench the whole time and get no playing time, that's not going to really do you any good either. So I really just wanted to make sure that you, as you start to evaluate these travel teams, I encourage you to definitely be a, be a part of one, but just make sure you really, you know, sit down with that coach, ask him or her, you know, do you have any current college athletes, you know, what tournaments are you going to be uh, playing in? Um, you know, just really, you know, maybe watch a practice, find out how often they practice, 
you just want to really do your due diligence uh, when it comes to that. But again, if you get if you get hooked up with the right team, that can certainly help you, uh, you know, you know, get, you know, fast track uh, your your college recruiting. All right. Um, so I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to say it again now um, because I'll, I'll add some context to it. But I want you to, you know, continue to maintain open lines of communication with college coaches throughout the process. And I'm going to give you four different examples, four or five different examples of when you can, you know, I'm assuming you've already communicated with a coach once, right? You've had that initial contact with them. So you're early on in the process. So now that you've established that quick, you know, one conversation via email or over the phone, now these are four or five different you know, events, if you will, that you can take advantage of to, to really maintain that relationship and, and keep the lines of communication open. So you get a transcript, right? You just get done with your marking period, right? And you did a good job. Update your coach on, on, on your grades for the, for the semester. You just took the SAT, the ACT, you got back your score. Update the coach on, on your score. Uh, maybe a local newspaper or yeah the newspaper or television show you know sports station uh they did a nice little feature on you that's a good time for you to reach out and say hi coach i just wanted to share with you uh a story that um you know that was written about me um or that i just made the the area's all-star team um just want to share the link with you i hope all is well boom Another time for you to, to reach out to a coach, maintain that, 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 that relationship is to share, you know, maybe you're about to play a, a spring sport, share with them your upcoming schedule, right? Let them know about your games for your high school team so they can maybe come see you play. Or if you're on a travel team, let them know, okay, well, my team is playing at this tournament this week. If you're in the area, I hope you can you can attend, right? So there's a number of ways in which you can Stay t maintain that communication with a coach. But the last tip I'll give you uh, is this, and it's important. Um, you notice in the first few examples I gave you, the whole time you were talking about yourself, right? You were updating them on you. I need you to also make sure you are following their program and you can reach out to them to congratulate them on certain milestones. So maybe they're on a five game win streak, right? Hi coach. I just noticed you won your fifth straight game in conference. Congratulations. Keep it going. Hey coach. I just don't say, Hey, say hello coach. I just noticed that one of your players got rookie of the week. Congratulations. Hi coach. I just noticed you snapped a six game losing streak. Congratulations. Or maybe the coach won their 500th game or their 100th game, whatever the case may be. But now you want to congratulate that co your co that coach on that milestone. So there's a number of ways you can see throughout this process that you can maintain that relationship with the coach. And I stay on this really long, but it's really important and critical because so many recruits don't do that, right? They get that one email from a coach, they reply, and then they never reach back out to the coach. Um, now let's get to highlight films. If you haven't done so already, keep your highlight film under two minutes. Two minutes, two to two and a half minutes long. Um, mute the sound and make sure you include a variety of plays. The example I always give is, you know, if you're a running back, a, a coach does not want to see you, you know, show off, you know, 10 straight five-yard touchdown runs. Right. Show that you can catch the ball out of the back, that you're a good blocker. You can make people miss whatever the case may be. But show your versatility. So make sure you have a variety of plays on your highlight film. All right. And now I've just so you know, I've already lost track of where I'm at, but I promise you I will get to 50. <laughs> I'm going to take a breath because I've been going pretty quick here. I hope this is helpful to you guys. Um, but, yeah, definitely keep your highlight film under two minutes long mute the sound and include a variety of plays that highlight all of your, um, all of your skills. All right. Take unofficial visits to college campuses to show genuine interest in the school. Now, obviously it's great to go on the official visits, 
that's amazing. The school pays for everything, your travel and, and all that stuff. But a good way for you to show a coach that you are really interested in their program is to travel to their school on their dime and learn more about the school and their program, right? So take unofficial visits to college campuses um, as often as possible, quite frankly. I know there's there's an expense to this, but please, like, you know, budget, plan accordingly, and and try to, you know, during school breaks or on a, if you're on a vacation, plan the vacations around it. If you go to a tournament, right, you're traveling to these tournaments, make sure you pop into these schools and, and go on an unofficial visit. That can definitely help, you know, boost your your um, your uh, your your recruiting process. Um, if you're not doing this already, if you're thinking about trying to specialize in a sport, don't. Right. The next one is play multiple sports, please. College coaches love recruiting multi-sport athletes, so please play multiple sports. It's only going to help you. Particularly, again, going back to football. If you play football. And particularly if you're a skilled player and you are not running track, you are missing out on a golden opportunity to to get recruited by a coach. Or if you wrestle, do something, right? Um, now, if you get to your sophomore, junior year, you kind of want to lock in on one sport, I get it. But if you're an eighth grader or you're a ninth grader, um, I really encourage you to, to play multiple sports, all right? Um, I need you to also now, as you go through this process and you're doing all this, be realistic, right? You got to be realistic and you got to pursue schools that fit you, that fit your athletic ability and, I'm going to say it again, and academic standing, right? So you may be a really talented Division II player. And, you know, the school, though, at the Division II level that you're reaching out to has, uh, you know, a rigorous um, ex a low acceptance rate. If you have a 2-4, GPA, or even like a 2-6 GPA, you score, you know, a thousand on your AC on your SAT, there's a good chance that coach won't be able to get you into the school. So please make sure that as you are evaluating and you put together your list of 50 schools, you 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 base the you base this decision off of not only your athletic fit but also your ac academic fit, all right? Um, teamwork makes the dream work, okay? Um, and what I mean by this is, you know, the student athlete can't do, go at this all by themselves, right? Families, I really need you guys to kind of design tasks for one another to do, right? I, I'm a firm believer, yes, college coach, the, 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 the students have to be the one talking to coaches. They're, they're the ones that have to develop that relationship and that rapport. But there's a number of things behind the scenes, mom and dad, that you can be doing to support your student athletes' efforts. You can help keep them on task, keep them on track um, throughout this process. Um, so I just really want to encourage you all to, to really divide and conquer, okay? So teamwork makes the dream work. I haven't talked about it yet, but now it's important. I'm going to get into this. Leverage the power of social media to promote your skills and your athleticism. And also to promote your desire to actually play sports in college. And, you know, I've, although I haven't released these episodes yet, but I promise you, you guys are in for a treat because over the last three or four days, I've interviewed, let's see, a, a former Division I soccer player. Now, he did graduate in like 2015, so he did have social media and huddle at his disposal. But before that, I had a, a, a graduate of Northeastern University, but first he went to Syracuse University for football. He went to Syracuse in 1993. And another gentleman who went to, who played Division I basketball at Purdue, right? He was the Big Ten leading scorer while he was there, right? So... The reason why I, I, I share this is because they grew up in a time when there was no social media, there was no huddle, there was no YouTube. You literally had to, you know, um, you had, you didn't, you barely had the internet, right? To, to really, it, to, to really even learn about schools. You had to like call a coach, hope that they, you know, give you a, a call back. Uh, if they asked for your tape, you had to go to a DVR, you had to splice it up. 
and it was a, a lot a harder process for you to, to get recruited. The beautiful thing now about the internet and social media is that it has shrunk the world. It literally has. It has shrunk the world. There is no reason, given the internet and all the tools you have at your disposal, why you can't, if you have the skills and you have the grades, uh, you can't reach out to a coach and, and get on their radar, right? And the big way you can do this is through social media. Uh, so I really want to encourage you guys to create um, a, a definitely a Twitter page because all coaches are on Twitter. Make it public, right? And I also want you to create, um, at minimum, a YouTube channel, if possible. Instagram, I like it, but coaches particularly, though, are on, on Twitter the most. But then you can use YouTube to 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 create some highlights, which I'll talk to, talk to you about in a little bit. But that's really important. Leverage social media to promote yourself. Use your real name, right? I saw a coach the other day say that he – you know, it's kind of hard for him to, to, to search out for coach for kids when they don't use their real name. So don't use nicknames. Use your real government name as your headline. OK, but need you to do that. Obviously, keep it clean. Post the, the most accurate stuff. I'm not going to go into all the all the weeds right now, but just please create. Have a social media presence and just understand who your audience is, who your target audience is, your friends. I'm sorry. Over the next couple of years. They are not your target audience, okay? Because they can't give you a scholarship. Only your coach, only a college coach can give you a scholarship and advocate on your behalf to get into a school. So remember that with every post, every tweet that you do, okay? So leverage the power of social media. Another way you can leverage social media, though, is by um, I want you to now take the schools on your target list and then follow their coaches and follow their teams um, on social media. Why do you think you want to do that? Because that's going to allow you to stay informed on their program. That's how you find out that they have that five game win streak. That's how you find out that a player was named rookie of the year or player of the week. So please make sure you um, you are following your coaches and are using that information to um, to, um, to 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 be aware and to, to stay informed on uh, on what's going on with those programs. Every once in a while, you know, comment on their on their post, retweet it, like it, use their hashtag. Okay. Lastly, if you are going on these visits, okay. You just took an official visit. A coach took the time to show you around. They hosted you. Um, or if a coach um, came and watched you play, they came on a home visit. They visited you at your school. What else should you do with social media? It's a great opportunity for you to say thank you to them publicly. Okay? So say thank you to the coach. Had a great time visiting with coach so-and-so, but whatever the case may be. Um, and again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go into all of it, but that's a great way for you to, to leverage social media. The next thing, study the roster makeup and their scheme. See, many of you, let's say you play wide receiver and you may have a school on your target list and they, they do two wide, two wide receiver sets the whole game and they, they, they run the ball 80% of the time, but yet that's on your target list. You're going to be miserable at that school. You're going to be blocking the whole time. So just really understand the, the scheme that the team runs, but then also pay attention to their roster. I'm going to get to this in a little bit because that's going to help you as you start to negotiate your, your scholarships. See what I'm saying? Because um, if you can see, you know, there's some positions, let's say now soccer, if you're a goaltender and they have, you know, one senior, two juniors and a sophomore on a team, and now they're going to come in as a freshman. I mean, sure, you, I'm not saying be afraid to come. Don't be afraid to compete. But the, the odds are they're probably going to sit your first three years because they already have a pipeline of goalies. So I think this is really important as you build out your target list, as you start to, 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 to make some critical decisions, you really got to be aware of the roster makeup and, and the scheme that they play. Um, this is really important too. 
um, particularly and really for all families, but really if as you're starting out, I'm, I'm a firm believer in creating an environment. Um, and, you know, so many families try to go at this by themselves. They don't want to, you know, talk to other families who are currently going through the recruiting process. And I just, I just really think that that's a big mistake. Um, I think it's really important if you can identify maybe four or five other families who you know have the same goals as you, whether they're the same sport, different sport, doesn't matter. Listen, you guys are not competing against each other for, for scholarship opportunities. Um, and ultimately, I think the value in surrounding yourself with other families with the, with the same you know, goals in general, you guys are all going in the same direction, is going to help um, keep you motivated, keep you on track, but it's also going to, you know, you're going to have an accountability partner, right? So I really encourage you to to identify some families in your community, and you guys all play. I mean, whether it's your travel team, whether there's another teammate on your on your high school team, or maybe it's a team, uh, uh, one of your friends from another a, a neighboring school. You guys, it's okay. You're not you're not battling one another, okay? There are a million student athletes trying to play. Um, you're all trying to go to different schools. The odds of you guys trying to go to the same exact school um, are really slim. Um, and I think the benefit of just kind of surrounding yourself uh, with um, with other families far outweighs any potential, you know, conflicts of interest. Okay, so please, I really encourage you to to get part of that, you know, to get an accountability group. Um, and again, I, again, I kind of am jumping around a little bit, um, but educate yourself on the process, right? Um, and this is really where mom and dad, you really need to come into play, right? Educate yourself on core classes. Um, you know, what, what does that all mean? The sliding scale, uh, the recruiting calendar. The reason why the recruiting calendar I really want you to pay attention to is there are certain times of the year where a college coach cannot talk to you um, in person, right? So why does this matter? Well, earlier I told you, you know, before you go on a an unofficial visit to go check out a school, I want you to contact the coach. And the reason I want you to contact the coach in addition to, you know, showing that interest, but it's also to make sure that they're actually going to be there. And that they can actually see you. There's nothing worse than going three hours. You get there and you go to the coach's office and say, oh, I'm so sorry, but, you know, this is a dead period. And we're, we're not allowed to, uh, to visit with you on campus right now. I'm sorry. Right? So mom and dad, I really need you to educate yourself on this process as best as possible. And you don't have to know every single sport. All you have to pay attention to is your one sport that your son or daughter is playing and pursuing a scholarship in. Okay. So really educate yourself on that process. Um, track your progress. This is a big one, right? Track your progress. Uh, Cause I mentioned it earlier, this is a three or a four year commitment. Maybe you start in this late. So if you're a junior, it's a two year commitment, but you're behind the eight ball. But nonetheless, at minimum, it's a two, three year commitment. And there's a lot of things for you to do along the way. And it can, it's really easy for things to fall through the cracks and you can forget conversations. You can forget about tasks that you want to do. So I really encourage you to develop a system that allows you to track your progress, whether you're writing it down in a notebook, you create an Excel spreadsheet. Um, there's a number of different ways in which you can try to stay organized, uh, create tasks um, for you to do. But I really need you to, to uh, track your progress. And I also want you to um, write down your goals, right? Write down your monthly, your weekly, and your daily goals, right? What is it that you want to accomplish, you know, in each time period? And then cross it off. There's nothing better than writing down your goal, completing it, going back to your checklist, and then crossing it off, right? So please write down your goals, track your goals, um, and, um, and do that. Have a strategy. All right. Um, you know, I, I think that it goes without saying by now because I've, I've kind of been giving you a strategy, but 
you know, hope is not a strategy, right? Hope is not a strategy. You actually have to have a plan, right? Student athletes, you never just walk into a, 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 a game without first preparing, without first, you know, you know, reviewing y- y- your opponent, learning more about them, right? You got to do the same thing with college recruiting. You got to understand the process. You got to develop a plan. And then you got to work your plan, okay? Um, so please make sure you have uh, a strategy uh, for sure. Whoo! I think we're probably like at 49 right now, if I had to guess. I'm going to go back and count afterwards. But uh, I really just want to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm driving these points home in my limited time. What I think I'm going to do is I'll uh, I'll type this all out for you as well. And then uh, I encourage you to um, to visit You Recruit You. Sign up for our newsletter. And what I'll do is if you sign up for the newsletter, in my next email that I send out to everybody, I'll have all these typed out for you. But you got to sign up for the newsletter. So please uh, just head on over to yourecruitu.com. That's the letter U, recruit, and then the letter U.com. Drop your email there. And then uh, we'll be sure that you get this list that um, that I'm going through. So it's all there for you. Um, what else do I want to have? Um, throughout this process, I really need my families to uh, to be transparent and honest with a coach. Okay, um, you cannot lie. Coaching the coaching fraternity is really small. Okay, so. I know it would be great if a coach calls you and they ask you, you know, how many offers do you have? If you don't have any offers, you got to be really upfront and then say, coach, at the moment, I don't have any offers, um, but I have reached out to about 10 other schools. And just be honest with them. Um, Don't exaggerate any offers uh, that you, that you, that you have or don't have, but you really got to be honest and you got to be transparent. Uh, with a college coach. Okay. Um, Another thing I want you to do, and I kind of touched on it earlier, but, you know, I don't want you, you know, you always hear, you know, other, you know, there's a lot of different sites and, you know, other college recruiting coaches or like myself. And we all kind of say the same thing when it's, when it comes to, you know, you got to be proactive. You got to reach out to coaches. You do have to reach out to coaches. But here's the thing. You have to be really respectful of their time. You have to be respectful of their time. So if you're going to reach out to a coach, you have to have a reason for reaching out to that coach. And I gave you that list earlier. But have a reason for calling or emailing or texting or DMing a college coach. Okay, don't just say, hey, coach, just going to see how you're doing. No. Hi, coach. Like I said you know, earlier, I got my transcript. I got three A's and a B. Just thought I'd share it with you. Boom. Hi, coach. I took the SAT for the second time. I raised my score from 1,000 to a, a, a 1150. But I'm going to take it one more time and try to get it to a 1250. That's what I mean by having a reason uh, for calling a coach. Most importantly, though, just make sure you, re- you you respect their time. This is a big one, okay? So if you are a junior, you have this beautiful thing at at your disposal, and it fits right in right in the palm of your hand. And it's called a phone. It's called a cell phone. So if you're a freshman or a sophomore and you call a coach, I'm not saying don't call the coach. I think it's great, but the reality is they can't call you back until your junior year. But if you're a junior or if you're a senior and you're talking about jumpstarting this process in 50 days or less, the best way to do this, the best way is to leave your comfort zone, pick up the phone, and call the coach all day long. It's the quickest way. It's the most time-efficient way as well, right? It's much easier for you to make a phone call Real quick, dial a number than it is for you to craft an email or craft, you know, to write a letter, whatever the case may be. So pick up the phone if you're a junior or a senior and call the coaches on your target list and introduce yourself. Okay. Here's the next thing, though. It's really important. So I always tell families when I reach out to them or, or when I'm working with them, 
if you're a basketball player or, or if you're a baseball, you're a pitcher, say, you know, a pitcher would never go into a, a game, you know, say they have their fastball, uh, they have a good curve, but now they want to, they want to work on, you know, they want to, they want to add a slider to, into the mix. Any good pitcher would never just go into a game and throw a slider for the very first time without ever practicing hundreds and hundreds of times, you know, in, in bullpen sessions, right. Or in, you know, in, in bat, well, maybe not batting practice, but you know, my point is, you know, you, you're going to, you're going to practice that slider over and over and over again before you try it in the game. Same thing with a basketball player. You want to work on a certain move you know, you want to work on a, a cross or whatever the case would be. You know what I'm talking about here, where I'm going. The point is athletes, you always get reps working on a particular move or shot or pitch, right? You, you, you're practicing nonstop. You do it like a thousand times before you ever even try it in a game. Well, the same thing holds true when it comes to co- reaching out to a college coach. Many of you, I get it. You, you live in this, in this world, and I'm not blaming you. Um, you're 16, you're 17 years old. Many of you are just used to just texting your friends over and over again. Many of you don't really talk on the phone. Many of you don't even know what to say to a coach if you were to call them. So mom and dad, this is something you could potentially help your student athlete with, but I'll get to it in a little bit. This is where you may want to reach out to somebody who can help your son or daughter communicate this message to a college coach. But I really want to encourage you over the next 50 days, before you think about calling a coach, make sure you practice what you're going to say over and over again. In sales, they call this an elevator pitch. So if somebody, you know, a prospect, say you're at a networking event, so a potential customer, they come up to you and they say, hi, what do you guys do? What do you do? Tell me about your business. In 30 seconds or less, you're supposed to know cold what your services are and how you can help them. It's no different as a recruit. You have about 30 to 45 seconds, whether you're leaving a voicemail or if a coach picks up the phone to to gain and keep their attention, to keep their interest. And I don't want you the first time you you practice calling a coach or on the flip side, the first time you hear from a coach, they call you and you have no idea what to say. So I really want you to practice what you're going to say to a coach. The first time you say something out loud, you know, regarding um, a college coach should not be on on a live call, right? Um, so I hope that that helps you out. Mom and dad, here's one for you as well. I need you to, earlier I mentioned, there's a time, you know, where the majority of the time it's up to the student athlete to develop that rapport, that relationship with, uh, with the college coach. But eventually there's going to come a time where you definitely do need to step in and you need to be that presence. So whether it is going on those unofficial visits or, or an official visit, or they come to your home, you know, for a home visit, all that good stuff. But also in a critical time, particularly now, if you guys are juniors and seniors and money starts getting discussed, right? I need mom and dad. This is when you guys really got to step in and you, sh- you should be the ones negotiating that offer, not your student athlete. That's just my opinion. Some people may disagree, but I don't want to leave a $200,000, $300,000, you know, potential investment in the hands of a 16-year-old or a 17-year-old. Mom and dad, that's when it's time for you to step up. Now, with the full ride, I mean, it's kind of easy, full ride. <laughs> but as you know, if you listen to previous episodes, most student athletes aren't on a full ride. They usually get some form of partial scholarship. And I just think it's really important, mom and dad, for you to, to be up front with the coaches and tell them what it is that you guys need. So if a school costs $45,000, the coach says we're going to give you a $15,000 scholarship, if that's not enough, you got to tell them, coach, that's not enough. <laughs> all right? So, um, and though, well, first of all, let's back up. The first thing you say is, thank you, coach, for this opportunity. Thank you for your interest. Thank you for this generous offer. However, given our our situation we're gonna we're gonna need this and be really upfront with that number don't sugarcoat it all right so that's where mom and dad you know you can definitely 
over the next 50 days, as those offers hopefully start pouring in, you can you can certainly uh, help your 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 student athlete. And I miscalculated. I don't think I was at 40 earlier. I think I was like at 30 because I'm like scrolling down my my page here, and I got like 20. Wow, jeez, I got like 20 more to go. But um, I hope this is helpful to you guys. Um, I am. I know I'm talking kind of fast, um, but again, I really encourage you go to urecruitu.com. Um, sign up for the newsletter, and then in my next email that I send out, maybe next week, I'll uh, I'll be sure to have a nice you know um, PDF for you, so you guys can maybe like hang it up on your uh, on your refrigerator as a daily reminder. Okay. Um, so where else are we at now? Let's see. I can probably skip some of these. Uh, multiply. Oh, so here's another one. So kind of talking about strategy real quick. Um. What I want to get to, uh, let's see. I want you to create leverage, student athlete, mom and dad. And here's how you do it. Now, you want to do it in a, in a really respectful, you want to do it in a very honest way. But let's say a coach, the best way for you to create leverage, maybe you have a program, a team that is your dream school, and maybe they are recruiting you. They show interest, but maybe they're only giving you you know, if it costs fifty thousand dollars, they're only giving you twenty five thousand. I shouldn't say only twenty five thousand dollars is a great amount of money, but it's not enough. You need you need forty thousand. Like you're willing to pay ten thousand, but they got to come up fifteen thousand dollars. So how do you get that extra fifteen thousand dollars, right? How do you multiply it? You know, how do you create that leverage? Well, here's the thing: college coaches have a fear of missing out too, right? The thing is. They don't want to miss out on top on, on top players. They don't want to re- miss out on, you know, um, high academic achievers, and they definitely don't want to miss out on a student athlete uh, to a conference rival. So I always a little tip. I always highly encourage families to do is once you get, you have a conversation with a coach, from 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 one conference, even if it's not even if you're not fully on board with it. You should at minimum reach out to four or five other schools in that conference. And the reason why you want to do that is because once you do that, you can now call that coach. And when they ask you, who else are you looking at? You can say, well, actually, you know, I've been in touch with coach so-and-so from this school, from coach so-and-so from this school. I'm going on an unofficial visit to visit this school. And now you've named three of their conference rivals. You think that coach? That's recruiting you may say, hmm, I better up my offer. Um, or what it also does, though, is it gives you credibility with the other coaches. So now when you reach out to those other three coaches and they say, are you looking at anyone else? I was like, yeah, I'm looking at a few schools. Um, you know, the most promising at the moment is, you know, school A, which is their rival. Um, right now, they've given me a $25,000 offer, but, you know, I- I'm hoping they can they can increase that. So now what you've done in a really tactful, respectful, transparent way is you now have hopefully created a bidding war with these schools. And that's how you instantly, overnight, can create leverage with these teams. So I always encourage families, whenever you are building out that target list of schools, because many of those schools are in the, you know, in the same region of the country, I really encourage you at minimum when you're building out that target list, have four or five schools from the same conference. That's going to help you create that leverage with college coaches. And I, and just so you guys know, you know, part of my coaching when I when I work with families, I I I go into much greater detail on how to really execute um, that plan. Um, the next one: personalize your notes, right? So I always encourage you to write emails to coach. I think it's it's a good way to do it. So personalize your emails to college coaches. Don't send mass emails, right? Coaches can sniff that out. Okay. Um, so make sure you write their, their first, you know, hi coach, their last name, you know, at the beginning, make sure you have their, you know, um, the correct spelling of their name. Make sure you have the right school that they coach at. Because again, a lot of you copy and paste and you can mix up. And now, you're saying a coach from school A, but you're actually sending it to the wrong school, right? So make sure you do all that, but correct 
your um, you spell check, you know, check your grammar. At the end of the day, I want you to, you know, um, you know, there's an old saying in, in construction, you know, my, I should say my dad used to teach me this whenever we would do stuff around the house. He's really handy. But he would say you want to, you know, um, measure, tw measure twice, cut once. Well, I want you to um, I want you to check twice, send once. So check through that email two times, three times, get it all in order and then hit send. Um, but most importantly, personalize the message to each coach. And speaking of emails, right, all of you should be doing this. If you're not, shame on you. You should have an email address that is dedicated solely for college recruiting. And it should be your first name, last name, and maybe your jersey number or your graduation year, right? But have an email address that is used solely for college recruiting, all right? I want you to also, you know, this kind of goes back to goal setting, but I want you to set task-specific goals each week. As importantly, though, I want you to put those tasks on your calendar. I'm going to say that again. Not only do I want you to set task-specific goals, but I want you to take the next step. Like, I'm sure if I go to your home right now and you, I look at your family calendar, you have all your tournaments, you have all your practices, you have, you know, your family vacation planned, you have all this stuff, you know, parent-teacher conference, whatever the case may be, you have it all outlined on your calendar because that's your reminder. You have to get that stuff done. Well, guess what? You need to do the same thing for college recruiting. You have to set aside time to do it. And if you don't set aside that time, if you don't schedule it, it won't get done, most likely. So whether it's the first thing in the morning you're doing it, whether it's something you do before nighttime, whether it's, you know, over the weekend, whatever it is, I need you to put these tasks on your calendar. And for some of them, you can make them recurring tasks, right? So do that over and over again. But I need you guys to do that. You guys have your cell phones. It's right there. It's simple for you to do. Real quick, going back, right? Going back to um, the email for a second. Once you create that email, whether it's with Yahoo or Gmail, which is what I recommend, and here's why. Well, Yahoo and Gmail, I'm sure a number of the, the email um, services do, but they have apps. They have a free, you know, you can download the Gmail app onto your smartphone, the Yahoo email down to your, your smartphone. Why is this important? So I mentioned it earlier, speed kills, right? Not only in sports, but also in college recruiting. And this is what I mean by that. I need you to reply to emails and phone calls within one or two hours of receiving them. Now, obviously, if a coach emails you at like 11 o'clock at night, it's different. But if you happen to be awake, hey, why not reply to it? But most families or most people, I should say, in this business, they'll say, oh, follow up and, and you know, do so within 24 hours. And that's not bad. That's not bad advice. But there's 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 good, there's better, and then there's best. To me, the best practice is replying to an email or a text within one to two hours. Because again, it shows urgency and it shows that you are really interested in that school. So if you download the Gmail or the Yahoo app on your phone, as soon as you get an email from the coach, you see it, and you can quickly reply to it. Again, I say quickly reply to it. That doesn't mean I want you to be hasty. Make sure you check twice, submit, or send once. But my point is you get that on your phone. You see it right away, and that's why I think if you can do it within one or two hours, that, that's going to really help you, okay? We are almost wrapping up. Let me see what else we got here. I got a number of things here. Um, update coaches on key events. I got to that. Start the front. Start the process. Your freshman year. I got to that. Pay attention to the recruiting period. Right. Don't don't visit a school during the dead period. Um, create and use an email specifically for college recruiting. I did that. This is more of a a mindset that I want you guys to really to pay attention to. Um, 
and I, I say, I mean, I say all this sincerely, but I really want to, to, to stress this part and drive this point home um, because I went through it and I remember vividly, you know, I was a late bloomer. So I remember though, I would, I would talk to some other players in the, in the area and they were getting recruited as sophomores. And this is back in the nineties. So, you know, the process was starting pretty early for them and, you know, they're showing me their letters and their offers. Now, who knows how, if they were really getting offers, you never know. But my point is I started to kind of compare my situation to theirs a little bit. Um, and I don't want you to do that. Whether you're a freshman, sophomore, or senior, junior, it doesn't matter. Um, don't get caught up in the hype of comparing your situation to somebody else's. Yes, I want you to have that accountability group, have a have that team around you. You guys are all pulling in the same direction, right? Root for one another. But don't get like, oh, how come they got to offer them? I'm better than they are. What you got to realize is that every coach has a – has a need that they're looking to fill. Maybe your skill set doesn't align with what they're looking for. Doesn't mean you're not a good player. It just means that they don't need your particular skill set. Just like on the flip side, there may be multiple schools that are coming after you, but their style of play doesn't fit what you want to play, right? So it works both ways, but I just really want you to trust your process and don't compare your situation to others and realize that recruiting is different for everybody. It's not it's not the same. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got. Right down there goes. I'm pretty much um, wrapping up here. I've got a couple more things I want you to do. Um, you know, ask questions. Right? Ask questions of college coaches. Be really uh, critical. Not critical per se, but like get the questions that you have. Get them answered. Don't be afraid uh, to ask him as you go on these official visits, these unofficial visits, ask the players, ask the support staff, you know, ask the coaches, you know, the questions that you want answered. OK, that's that's really uh, important for you uh, to do uh, throughout this college process. Um, this is a big one. And I, I would say this is definitely something you should be doing probably towards the end of your sophomore year and at the start of your junior year. Um, I really want you to uh, get evaluated by a college coach. The quicker, the better, right? And the reason why this is important is because many of you, you know, I'm a big believer, you know, um, you know, of staying in your lane, right? So many, so many times people go outside of their lane, not just with college recruiting, but just in life. They overextend themselves there and then they're just making things much harder for themselves to, to do. Right. Um, what I really want you to do is the reason why if you get evaluated by a coach and you are open to honest feedback, what's going to end up happening is you're going to be able to quickly identify where you really fit in. So if it's me, if I go to a junior day first, again, I tell a coach that I'm attending that junior day while I'm there, I make sure I introduce myself to that coach. Hopefully you get some instruction that coach is truly able to evaluate you. And then at the end, it's tough to say. I mean, it, 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 it requires you to leave your comfort zone. But if it's me, I would say, coach, you know, based off of what you saw, you know, what level do you think I'm, I'm best capable of playing at? What do I need to work on? But also, you know, do you think I can play at this level? Am I a Division One player if it's a Division One camp? You know, can I compete in your conference? You know, what do I need to work on to get on your radar? You know, I just need you to get evaluated by an unbiased source. But you also have to get it from someone who knows what they're talking about, a reputable, um, you know, source. And to me, there's no better source than a reputable resource or than a, a college coach. Because they're going to tell you exactly, you know, what you got to do uh, and where you stand. And the quicker you identify where you fit in talent wise, the easier it's going to be for you to identify those 50 schools. See, it all kind of plays together. And once you identify that, you you attack those 50 schools, your recruiting process is going to be much more enjoyable, won't be as frustrating. You won't be overwhelmed. Um, you won't get discouraged. You, you'll, you'll save some money because you're not going to the wrong camps or the wrong showcases. Um, and that's, that's, that's something I really think 
um, is important for you guys to, to really to do. That's critical. I mean, these are all critical, but obviously if I had to weight some of these, that's probably one of the top 10 things I would definitely recommend. Um, I also want you to, you know, when I work with families, I have a, a nice little worksheet that I give them, but I also want you to, you know, identify what is most important to you in a college, in a team. And once you identify those five to seven factors, maybe it's financial aid. At the end of the day, you're like, listen, I need money. I need money or, you know, distance from home, style of play. Do they have your major, you know, small classes, big classes, big city, small city, suburbs? Like what is most important to you? But then as importantly, though, I want you to create a scoring system. And this goes back to, you know, being organized and, and tracking your progress, but create a scoring system for each school and rank them, right? You may not be able to rank it right away, but as you start to get to know a program more, you go and you can rank those different factors um, and kind of like give them a, a grade. Just like you get a grade as a student right now, you have your homework assignments, you have your quizzes, you have your 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 tests, you have your midterms, you have your finals. It's no different when it comes to college recruiting. Keep filling out that report card for each school. Uh, so really first identify what's most important to you um, in a school and then assign a grade uh, to those factors as you get to learn more about a school. Probably should have said this one much sooner uh, than I did, but it goes without saying, student athletes, your biggest asset as an athlete is your body, right? Your body is your biggest asset. So I need you to, to eat healthy. I need you to get your rest. I need you to stretch. And I need you to drink a lot of water, right? And obviously, if you're a senior, it's kind of late. I'm going to be honest. Because <laughs> so, like, one thing that happens to a lot of student athletes is, you know, this happened to me. I'll tell you a quick story. In, co in, in high school, I didn't stretch at all. Like I couldn't even like touch my toes, you know, bend over and touch my toes. I had the tightest hamstrings, tightest groins, tightest quads. And guess what? Once I got to college and I was playing football and the level of intensity just picked up, um, you know, I was always dealing with knickknack injuries. I was always going to the training facility. I would miss practices because my hamstrings were tight. I, you know, all these little nagging injuries. Or if I did play through the injury, I wasn't playing at a high level because in high school, I didn't create those good habits. So please, 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 uh, at minimum, eat healthy, get those rests, drink water, but really invest in stretching. Even consider taking yoga so you can, uh, can really, um, you should be gumpy out there and be super flexible. Um, and then lastly, and this is my invitation. Well, there's two more things I want to go with. Um, three more things here. I got my notes. And I definitely went over 50, I think. I did, I did more than 50, guys, but I'll consolidate it for later when I send you guys the, um, the checklist. But I'll start with um, knowledge alone is not power. You hear that a lot, right? You hear a lot of people say, oh, knowledge is power, knowledge is power. No, knowledge alone is not power. Because a lot of people know a lot of information, but they don't really use it, do anything with that information. Knowledge with action is power. You no, know, I've kind of outlined it. I've said it multiple times throughout this whole episode. This is what it's really all about. You know, 50 things to do, 50 steps to take to jumpstart college recruiting in 50 days or less. You know, 50 for 50. Um, knowledge without action, knowledge with action is power. So I need you to be to take action. I need you to be proactive and take complete control of this college recruiting process. And while you're doing that, my next statement is, I want you to really, and it's hard to say, I get it, but you, I want you to enjoy this process. This is an exciting time of your, of your, you know, mom, you know, student athletes, uh, you know, it's your first time going through this mom and dad, maybe it's your first time going through this with your son or daughter. Um, you know, I really want you to, to enjoy this process, have fun, stay positive, be encouraged, um, but you also have to have a, a tough mindset and don't take this process personally, right? Many of you, it happens. A coach could be talking to you for three months and then all of a sudden they sign another player, they no longer want you and they ghost you. 
don't take that personally. It stings. And you would hope a coach would, you know, be a little bit more professional. But unfortunately, that's not always the case. So don't take it personal. Um, just really try to enjoy this process, have fun, and, and stay positive. And the last thing I want to share with you, you know, as you guys all know, um, well, maybe you're not if this is your first time checking us out, but, um, you know, we do at You Recruit You, we provide coaching, right? We think it's vital, it's critical for families to, to get the help that they need. And that's the last thing. I want to really encourage you to get help. Right. Get help, though, navigating this process from someone who has walked in your shoes, who's already done what it is you're trying to do. So obviously, for our student athletes, you've never been a recruited athlete before. This is your first time. Mom and dad, odds are you didn't play sports in college. You never went through the recruiting process. Or even if you did, maybe you went through it 30 years ago, 25 years ago. That was a long time ago. Things have changed dramatically. So it's important for you to align yourself with someone who has been there, done that, but as importantly, stays current and up to date with today's trends, who stays current and up to date with today's rules, recruiting rules. Um, and that can also just give you an objective you know, opinion and provide you with a, a strategy, you know, specific to your goals, your your abilities in your academic standings, and also your your budget, you know, your your financial budget for college. And there's too many families right now are kind of just winging it. Um, this is a not a four-year decision or five-year decision. This is a 40, 50, 60-year decision. This could actually be a generational decision. Because I know there are some so many Student athletes, you're a first generation college student potentially for your family. You're going to be the first one to go to college. And I, I'm, I'm just so happy for you, right? And there are some of you who your only hope, you know, of even going to college is by leveraging your athletic ability and, and getting a scholarship because maybe mom and dad can't afford, um, you know, to pay for you to go to school. Or even if you have the means. And money is no object to you. And mom and dad, you both graduated from college. You have a master's degree. Whatever the case may be, at the end of the day, the goal of the son of the student athlete is to play in college. And the only way you can do that, in addition to being talented, in addition to having the grades, in addition to staying healthy, is to, to really understand and navigate this process. So I just want to encourage you to get help. Right. Yes. Tuning into the podcast every Thursday. That's great. It's helpful to you. I hope anyway. Um, but I just want to invite you if you want that one on one coaching, if you want to be able to talk to somebody once a month, uh, if you want to be able to email directly with somebody to answer your questions and to really map out a, a strategy, I would love to be that resource for you. And uh, I'll just say this. I invite you to go to yourecruityou.com. That's yourecruityou.com. Um, um, and, and let's connect and uh, consider signing up for our coaching program. We call it Study Hall. All right? Study Hall, you get a one 30-minute coaching call with me via Zoom conference calling. We record the call so that, that way you can review the notes afterwards. But then also in between that that month-long coaching call, if you have any questions in between that time period, you can submit emails directly to me. And then within 24 to 48 hours, I get back to you with an answer. So we remove all the second, all the all the the second guessing. You know, we don't want you to turn to other parents who maybe don't know what they're talking about. I love your parents, but um, we want you to make sure you're getting the answers that you need. Uh, so I just encourage you to do that. Um, I hope though. More importantly, uh, that during this time together that you found this episode helpful to you. I covered a lot of ground. I covered a lot of ground. So please listen to it again. Um, sign up for our newsletter. I'm going to send you um, this um, via PDF um, in next week's newsletter. Um, but uh, most importantly, though, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you 
I'm so humbled that you turn to Full Ride, you turn and you recruit you every single Thursday for some college recruiting advice. Um, and we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it going. Um, but until next time, this is your college recruiting coach, Quito Delgado, reminding you that college recruiting starts with you. What steps are you taking today to earn an athletic scholarship tomorrow? <laughs>